What's up you guys, Raif Durazi here, and today I want to get into the topic of face masks. There's a lot of information being presented in the media and online about face masks, and yet I continue to wear one. Here are some examples of what you can find on the news and on online. The CDC says wearing a face mask to protect yourself from this new coronavirus is actually not recommended. Is that masks are really not necessary and they may actually be unhelpful. If you do not have any respiratory symptoms such as fever, cough, or runny nose, you do not need to wear a medical mask. As we said uh, in the United States, the risk to any individual American is extremely low. As you can see from those clips, there's an overall consensus that masks are not advised for those of us who are not sick and who are not frontline healthcare workers. There are a number of arguments being presented as to why this is the case. We have the general blanket argument that it's not effective against the virus, coronavirus, COVID-19. We have the argument that people will wear them incorrectly that it only covers the mouth and the nose, not the eyes, that we are now practicing social distancing, so the need for a mask becomes irrelevant. Also, that people, when wearing a mask, will think that they are more protected than they are and therefore be more lackadaisical in other areas, such as not worrying so much about being around other people and not practicing social isolation or not worrying about touching and all of that as much. And the argument that it should only be worn by those who are sick. I'm sure there are more arguments, but those are the main ones that I picked up on. First of all, is it ineffective against the virus? In order to answer that question, we have to first differentiate between different kinds of masks. There are, in fact, different kinds of masks. There are surgical masks, N95 masks, N99 masks, gas masks, painter's masks. There are so many different kinds of masks. So to say, in general, that masks are ineffective against the virus is irresponsible. It's not a fully honest answer. It's an oversimplified, not helpful answer. <laughs> So regular surgical masks that you generally see people wearing are helpful against larger droplets from being filtered through. They do not have as stringent of filter standards as an N95 or N99 mask. And specifically when concerning N95 respirators, they do go into that on the CDC website when it comes to its effectiveness against COVID-19. So let's see, on the CDC website it says, CDC does not recommend the routine use of respirators outside of workplace settings in the community. Most often spread of respiratory viruses from person to person happens among close contacts within six feet. Recommending avoiding people who are sick, avoiding touching your nose, your eyes, covering cough and sneeze with a tissue. People who are sick should stay home and not go into crowded places or visit people in hospitals. This doesn't account for why they don't recommend respirators. Um, it just says alternatively what one should do instead of using a respirator. So a respirator is a personal protective device that is worn on the face or head and covers at least the nose and mouth. A respirator is used to reduce the wearer's risk of inhaling hazardous airborne particles, including infectious agents, gases, or vapors. What is an N95 filtering face piece respirator? An N95 FFR is a type of respirator which removes particles from the air that are breathed through it. These respirators filter out at least 95% of very small 0.3 micron particles. N95 FFRs are capable of filtering out all types of particles, including bacteria and viruses. When properly fitted and worn, minimal leakage occurs around edges of the respirator when the user inhales. This means almost all of the air is directed through the filter area. So that is kind of a little bit of a rundown on what an N95 respirator is. An N99 respirator basically filters out even more of these small particles, so I'm not really gonna get into that, but this is you know, an important distinction from just a surgical mask versus a respirator. I think that distinction is important to make when talking about masks and the efficacy against viruses and COVID-19. If you want, I'll have the link in the info box below the video and you can look at the CDC website and check the details there's more information about it but even just a cursory glance at the CDC's website shows that in fact at least an N95 respirator is effective against protecting people from viruses and bacteria that are airborne or that are 
are temporarily airborne from droplets. And then the next argument, well, people may wear them incorrectly. This is very true. People may wear them incorrectly. However, I don't think that is a reason to say that people shouldn't wear them. The argument is that if there are gaps between the mask and skin, then that's letting in some amount of air and that air might have particles of virus in water droplets in it and then you would inhale it and then that would bypass the mask and you would become infected rendering the mask ineffective. Or people who have facial hair, it might present the same issue and cause gaps where air can also enter past the mask. Again, the idea that someone might incorrectly wear the mask to me is not an argument to deter people from wearing masks or to say that they are ineffective for that reason. If anything, this would be a reason to help educate people on how to properly wear a mask and how to ensure that it's snug against the skin and that you put it on right and you take it off right and all of that. So so here's an analogy, and I know it's not a perfect analogy, but it's just one that popped in my head and I thought was um, just kind of funny to kind of compare to that. But it's like, it's the idea of if people were presenting the argument, well, we want to wear condoms to protect ourselves from viruses, bacterial infections, STIs, as it were. And then health professionals being like, well, we don't encourage condom use. We just encourage, you know, isolation from each other, AKA abstinence, because people might wear condoms incorrectly. They might put it on wrong. You might roll it the wrong way so that the lube's on the inside and you might not leave the little air pocket on the end of the condom and either of those things could cause it to break and if it breaks, well, then now you're exposed and this whole time you thought you were protected and really you were just putting yourself at risk. And if you wear a condom and you think you're protected, well, you might start doing other things in your sexual activity that puts you at more at risk to STIs that you wouldn't do otherwise. So we just say no condoms. That's kind of what it feels like to me. Or or even better, only those people who are exhibiting symptoms of an STI infection or know that they're infected should wear a condom. However, we don't have enough tests for people to test and actually see if they are infected. So yeah, go with that though. That'll help. I mean, how many people that you know are going around having sex and don't know that they have infections? And with that logic would be like, well, I don't know, so I don't have any symptoms, so I'm just not gonna, I don't need to wear a condom, it's, it's not for me. Rather than maybe providing more condoms to people. You see where I'm going with this, right? Now granted, I understand there is a shortage, and I will address that, but but just overall, as, as, a, as a stream of logic, in, an, in isolation, to make that argument is just kind of ridiculous to me. What the hell are we thinking? Okay, moving on. I've heard the argument that, well, you know, the mask covers the mouth and the nose, but it doesn't cover your eyes. Droplets could just as well go in your eyes, so there's really no point wearing a mask. Just because it covers two of the three orifices on your face doesn't mean that you should just nix it all together. What, where, where's, the, where's the rationality in that? How, how does that make sense? Please, somebody explain that to me. Well, it doesn't fully protect you, so then you might as well just have no protection on your face or you could just get something to cover your eyes and then that would solve that problem too. There's more, there's more than one solution than just like, ah, oh, well, there goes that. Oh, that's gonna get in my eyes, so. And here's another little silly analogy that just kind of is like an all or nothing mentality which I don't agree with. And I've heard this a lot growing up and this is more like health fitness related and it's like, shaming people for going to say McDonald's and then getting that supersized fries and that double quarter pounder and then getting a Diet Coke. And I remember distinctly like being with people and they witnessed that and this person and saying, oh, pff, look at that person. Oh, really, really? You're gonna get a supersized fries and a double quarter pounder with cheese and then you're gonna get a Diet Coke? Pff, how dumb is that? That's dumb, just get the Coke. Why are you trying to pretend like you're trying to be healthy? I'm gonna get a Diet Coke, that's stupid. And that rationale, that logic is just so nonsensical because so maybe this person got a combo meal, which is the food alone is 1200 calories or more. Are they obligated to add another two, 300 calories in a drink? Kudos to that person for saving at least that 200, 300 ex extra calories in their drink. And it shouldn't be like, oh, well, you're either gonna eat completely healthy or you're just gonna like shove butter down your throat. Choose your battles. And if you can cover two of the three orifices on your face, not the eyes, great, do it. And as far as social distancing and it being irrelevant now because we're all staying, you know, so many feet apart, just last night I took Duke out for a walk. 
I put my mask on and you know, logic would say, oh, well, I'm gonna take him out to walk and to go to the bathroom. I'm not gonna be near people, so who cares? I shouldn't, I'm not gonna be within six feet. It doesn't matter. But you know, caution prevailed. I took him out and as I was cleaning up his doo-doo, I heard someone coughing and that person happened to be directly above me in the first floor balcony of the building that I was standing right in front of and droplets of their saliva were raining down on me. And if I was someone just walking around, breathing in air, and if that person's sick and those droplets are coming down, I'm inhaling that, without a doubt. On that note, also, it's not just about breathing in stuff. Literally wearing a face mask is a deterrent from touching your face. There were plenty of times while wearing the mask where I had an itch, I instinctively just, because I touch my face all the time, subconsciously, I don't, I'm not even aware of it. And I wanted to itch and then I just, because I could feel the mask, you know, pressing against my skin, I, I go, uh, nah, I'm wearing a mask. I, can't, I couldn't even itch it if I wanted to, and I shouldn't. And that's kind of part of it, and I think that's helpful. And that if you do instinctively, yeah, you're on the phone, you're talking to someone, you're, you're fumbling with something, uh, you're, you know, your child's running, you got your dog or whatever, and you just have an itch, and you just instinctively want to go and scratch, well, now you have a barrier there, the mask, preventing you from doing that. So to say that we are socially distancing and therefore it's irrelevant is just not, not the case. There are so many instances where it still matters. The next argument, people may think they are protected when in fact they are not. So the idea that they have the false sense of security when they're wearing a mask. So they might be like, oh, well, you know, officials are saying do not gather in groups, you know, more than 10 or whatever it may be. Maybe just stay home. And then people might have masks and say, oh, you we're wearing masks, so it's okay. We can still like have our little Saturday night get together and play cards and whatever it is. Because they have the masks, they have this false sense of protection. Or that as a result of wearing the mask, they might be okay with hugging and touching more than they would otherwise because they feel, oh, you know, well, we covered that and we're not touching our own face, so there, there aren't gonna be any like virus on our hands, so it's okay. Rather than assume that people are going to make that mistake, and they very well might. The psychology might, behind it might um, encourage people to be a little bit more lackadaisical about those things when they have a mask on their face. We can counteract that psychology by educating, by creating campaigns all these times in these press briefings and, and conferences when we're saying, no, masks are ineffective. No, 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 They're, don't, don't bother. Don't worry about it. Ah, it's silly. Don't, don't wear the masks. It's not gonna help. Um, instead of doing that, we could say, yeah, masks are effective. However, the tendency will be to want to interact more and think that we have a sense of safety and caution. And instead, we should realize that we still have to practice these other things because the masks are effective in conjunction with all of these other practices that we're putting into effect to stop the pandemic. That's the way we should handle it. Not by downplaying the effectiveness of masks. That's just not right. And then the last argument that I really want to touch on is that it only should be worn by those who are sick. Hmm, okay. Only people who are sick. Let's review the facts. Who are people that are infected with coronavirus? How do we know? Well, they will have flu-like symptoms. Cool, great, we'll look out for that. People with temperatures, um, body aches, stuff like that. Got it, great, okay. Oh, and um, they might also have cold-like symptoms only. Okay, so sore throat, coughs, got it, great. So we got flu-like symptoms, cold symptoms, great, got it. Also, a, a large percentage of people are completely asymptomatic. Oh, okay, okay, so um, that, that, that could be everyone? Okay, well, we'll that, that's okay, we'll, 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 just, we'll just go get a test. Oh, I can't get tested? Oh, because there's not enough. That makes it a little, a little difficult, right? Those people that aren't asymptomatic, that might get symptoms, it might take them five days before they actually do get symptoms? Do you see what I'm getting at here? So only people that are sick. Well, theoretically, then that means everyone because we don't know who is sick and who isn't. There's no way to know for sure unless you get a test. Can I get an amen? No. All this information altogether just isn't making sense. It's not adding up. It's leaving us confused and like in this catch 22. It's a literal catch 22. It hurts my head to think about it. If we don't know who's sick and who's not, so we don't know who should be wearing a mask and who shouldn't, and if our goal is to protect the people who are most at risk, the elderly by and large, the immunocompromised, it is our responsibility then to wear the mask to protect them, right? 
because we could be asymptomatic. Those people who aren't wearing masks because they're asymptomatic and have a high viral load and are sick and spreading it to possibly people who are elderly or immunocompromised, that's a big, scary thing. And fortunately, we do have measures like distancing, social distancing, but not all the time. We can't do that 24 seven constantly when we need to go to the grocery store and we need to go to the stores and we need to, there, there are times when we're just gonna interact. Duke's snoring. Can you hear him? He stopped because I think he heard, he heard me call his name. <laughs> Why are you such a creeper, huh? And you know I'm talking about you. So if you're wondering why the couch is right here like this, it's because I had the couch by the TV like normal. And he got so tired of me sitting here at the computer desk that he was whining constantly because he likes to be as near to me as possible. So I finally just moved the whole dang couch right here so that he can be like literally within two feet and he's been totally happy ever since. Anyway, <clears throat> where was I? When you gotta go to the grocery store, yeah, you might be socially distanced while you're waiting in line outside of the grocery store, but when you're in those grocery aisles and you're passing by each other and stuff like that, social distancing is great, but it's it, it's not feasible to be doing that at all times. So in those instances where we know we're not gonna be that far apart from other people, it's, it's a good idea to have a mask, I would say. Taking a look at all these arguments and seeing how irrational and nonsensical so much of this is, it begs the question, okay then, why are these intelligent, smart people making these arguments if it really doesn't add up? If one plus one doesn't really equal three? Like, what's going on here? What's the real motive here? And from my perspective, it seems like there's a couple of things going on here. It seems like our government has been very, very poorly able to acknowledge responsibility for a lot of things related to what's going on, especially the fact that we do have a severe shortage of masks and no one's really taken responsibility for that or owned that. The government surely is not addressing the fact that we were not prepared as we should be. There should be masks available to everyone in the US, especially healthcare workers, and we should have an abundance of supply for them for instances like the one that we're in now. And we just, we were woefully underprepared, not just with masks, with medical supplies in general and beds and, and staffing and, and all of it, all of it's a mess. Everybody's refusing to take responsibility. It's embarrassing to acknowledge that you just didn't do the basics, but it's also our government trying to retain credibility. And that's really important during some a time like this of emergency, national emergency crisis, to have the credibility and the authority to say, this is what you need to do. You need to do it now. And it's coming from a credible source. So do it if they start showing all these cracks in, in the facade and the foundation, then people might begin questioning their um, ineptitude and that would hurt their credibility. Another component I think is the fact that there is a severe shortage and if they were to announce to everybody, hey, yeah, these masks will help to an extent. If you wear them properly, if you follow all these other guidelines, they will add an extra layer of protection, then everybody's gonna run out and try to get them and then realize, oh crap, like there's no masks, which can cause hysteria and panic. And everybody's like, We're, I'm not protected. Eh. Like, ah, I'm gonna get it now. I don't have a mask. And that's not necessarily the case. There's a lot that can be done to protect. A mask is just another tool. It's another layer of protection. But to do without doesn't mean that you're not protected and that you can't do things to protect yourself. That's just not the case. And that's not the argument that I'm making. What I'm saying is that I understand how they're trying to avoid panic in that sense or adding to panic as it were. The third reason I feel is that we got to make sure that frontline healthcare workers have masks. If everybody's running out getting masks and there's not enough to go around, then the people who need it the most, are not gonna have it. And these are people who are working directly in close proximity and close contact with patients constantly throughout the day. These people are our heroes right now. These people are on the front line doing amazing work, life-saving work, tough stuff, putting themselves at risk, uh, putting their lives at risk. I mean, there are doctors going into the hospital, into ICU, I know, one has died, the one, the one from Wuhan who was the whistleblower to begin with passed from the virus. I mean, this is a very serious threat, especially for healthcare workers. So for them to not get the respirators, the masks, the protection that they need is just a travesty. I understand that for sure. But my argument is let's be honest and real and transparent about that. Let's give 
the American public a little bit more credit that we don't need to be treated like we're dumb, that we don't need to be treated like we're all a bunch of wild, savage animals who are gonna go panic buying and get into fights in the grocery stores like some people are doing, like some people do do with toilet paper and canned foods and the like. I think that information, transparency, honesty, education, in the long term, those things win out by far, and those things are very strong. They also improve credibility and trust in the government. If we're not being fully honest, or being dishonest, or misinforming, all these conspiracy theories that we're seeing crop up everywhere, and the distrust, and oh, it's man-made, or you know, it was planted, you're just adding fuel to that fire. You're allowing that to proliferate. It's dangerous especially in the time of social media where things move so fast and there's not enough checks. There's not enough fact checking. There's not a PolitiFact can't be checking every single tweet and Facebook story and Instagram ad that's being run around claiming that silver is gonna cure your COVID-19. What we need is reliable sources that we can trust. And trust means being honest and transparent and giving the whole scenario, not dumbing it down, thinking that we can't handle. Check out this video that was posted by the WHO on how to put a face mask on properly. It's short. This is how you should wear a mask. Before touching the mask, clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. Inspect the mask for tears or holes, verifying which side is the top. This is where the metal piece is. Then identify the inside of the mask, which is usually the white side. Then fit the mask on your face. Pinch the metal strip or stiff edge so it holds to the shape of your nose. Adjust the mask over your face, covering your mouth and chin, making sure there are no gaps between your face and the mask. Do not touch the front of the mask while using it to avoid contamination. If you accidentally touch it, clean your hands. To take off the mask, remove the elastics from behind without touching the front and keep it away from your face. Discard the mask immediately in a closed bin and clean your hands. You see how simple that was? You see how easy it was to explain that? That's not gonna take up much airtime. Instead of at these press conferences talking about how ineffective face masks are, why don't you talk about how to put one on correctly? If you're worried about people putting it on incorrectly, that's so simple and so quick and so easy to do. If all these media outlets were sharing that information, it would be common knowledge and people would be sharing it with their loved ones, with their friends. This is how you do it correctly. Make sure you do it this way. Instead of saying, oh, no, no, no. The American public, they don't know how to put a mask on. They don't know how to fit it. They're incompetent. They're not gonna be able to do it. We're gonna rule out masks. Don't take away that layer of protection. It's not worth it. But let's have a little more faith in each other. And, and I know that's hard, especially these times we see so many negative stories and, and so many um, examples of human ineptitude and irrationality, because those are the stories that are gonna grab the most attention. They're the most controversial. So those are the ones that we're gonna see the most. What we don't see as much are the things that we as humans are doing proactively to help each other as a community, to be there for each other. All these HIV patients who are freely giving up their excess drugs in hopes that it might help patients in China who have COVID-19, um, which is in reference to another video that I did of a possible COVID-19 cure. And while that, that effort might be to an end that doesn't result in anything meaningful, my point is that people are willing to, to sacrifice and to give up and to do things for others during this time. Even though it seems like, you know, hope and faith in humanity is just gone, it's obliterated, it's not. There's still plenty of good people. And once some good people start proactively starting positive movements, then a lot of other people tend to jump in. They're just waiting for, for someone to, to spark it. Just like the grocery stores, when we realized, wait a minute, you know, elderly people and people who are immune compromised are having a hard time getting the food that they need at grocery stores. All of a sudden now you're seeing people say, hey, hey grocery stores, like let's give the first hour, the first two hours to the elderly to the immune compromise. Let's do that. Let's make that sacrifice together as a community to benefit this at-risk population. People are saying, yeah, we're kind of panic buying, but for the greater good, we're willing to do this. And it wasn't mandated by the government. It's not being mandated. It was because of common good. And I think common good can also be applied to the face mask shortage. I just think we just need to be honest and transparent and communicate how important it is that we 
protect and safeguard our healthcare frontline workers. The way that we now look at the military and we you know, look after our military and thank them for their service through education and information, appreciate the work that they are doing on our behalf. In that same way, we can educate and create this same sentiment towards healthcare workers so that we are doing the right thing for the right reasons. I do own two N95 masks that I use. I did purchase these masks well before it became a panic buy and it's just something that I wanted to have on hand as an emergency. So it's not something that I did in spite of a need for healthcare workers. It's not something that I will pursue now. I will not try to get um, any of these masks now because I know that it's needed for, it's crucially needed for healthcare and for people who are really, really sick right now. And I encourage you to do the same. Don't freak out because of this video and don't think that, oh, Rafe's saying it's effective so that I have to get one or otherwise I'll get sick. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that we need to ensure that um, we're spreading information effectively and being honest and transparent. But I think it's important that we all recognize for the right reason that we should reserve the masks now for these healthcare professionals and the dire sick. And with that, I will wrap up this video. I know this was a long-winded one, but I just have been so ugh, pent up about this. I needed to like get this out and share this. All right, that sums up my video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this sparked at least some thoughts on the issue and maybe clarified some things. I think we're capable of a lot more than we are given credit for. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will continue to be making more videos. I don't know how many more I'll be making on COVID-19, but definitely more videos with thoughtful matter to come. All right, you guys, I will talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>